So we could go ahead and get started covering the content and then hopefully, you know, we get, we get a couple more people showing up. Um, I, I know somebody gets off work right at three. So we'll see if maybe they drop in a little bit later on. But for now, um, I'm going to go ahead and begin with putting a link in the chat to this shared Google Doc. So if you want to go ahead and access that, um, this will be our shared document for our lecture today and anything that we add, then we can, we can uh, share it for people, for those of us uh, that couldn't join. So, all right, so let's go ahead and kick off our, um, our round two of orientation for LRNR. And we've already had some students in this morning. Um, so I'm gonna scroll down past our shared document here. And please go ahead and fill out the 3 p.m. Uh, slot here. So we're just giving like a little, okay, this is how I'm feeling. Um, I'm super, you know, scaled a one to five. How are you feeling from tired to super sparkly and rare to go? Um, I had to give myself a three because I made the mistake of eating a big lunch, which on busy days is just, uh, it's, it's no bueno. So I didn't, I didn't get coffee, but I got a LaCroix, LaCroix. How do you say it? I don't know. Everybody says it different. So, um, and also fun, fun fact about you. <laughs> What's your favorite fast food? So give you a moment to go ahead and access that and just fill in your uh, your uh, how you're feeling. So if you are watching this recording because you didn't attend class, I still need you to go in to this document, which I'll link into the recording. And you still need to go in and type in on the shared document. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, so we'll give we'll give uh, Yasmin a little bit of space there, so she can enter her enter her what she's what she's got going on. Um, so for our class, I want to go. So the way that we're going to structure this lecture today, um, we're going to go over our module. Okay, so our module two, uh, week one. And if, so week, week one, you guys got everything done. You know, there's, I think I was able to grade and get back to all of you um, with some feedback, uh, maybe some hints about how I like the papers to be formatted. Um, I want, I, I'm not gonna be a big stickler right now for formatting, but as we move into our more formalized papers, uh, like the annotated bibliography and citations, those will be MLA citation. So eh, right now, don't worry about it too much um, because we're not doing a lot of uh, uh, source citing, but just a heads up, if you are looking for any guidance for maybe how your paper should look or how your discussion post should look, maybe grammar or punctuation, or if you do cite something, we do use MLA. Okay, so um, this week uh, I, I made a big point of pointing out that uh, when you access this module, our week, our week two, week three, week four, week, that you need to make sure that you're moving through each module. It seemed like um, just in the way that the discussions were, um, were going, I could kind of tell that uh, some of the content hadn't really been asked, accessed yet. So this uh, overview will always provide, you know, kind of what's going on for the week. 
what, what assignments are due, what, uh, what readings, um, and what discussions. So discussions are, are our low stakes way of keeping in contact with each other, okay? Discussions are designed for us to, you know, maybe skirt around some of those, um, skirt around like between humor and seriousness. So it's a way for you to connect to your peers, chat with your peers. Um, it's also a way to start to maybe um, introduce new concepts. So really these last couple of uh, chats or discussions have been kind of more on the behavioral aspect of learning, acknowledging that learning is messy and confusing sometimes and uh, recursive, meaning um, sometimes we have to revisit and not always straightforward, basically. So uh, this, is, this is where we'll, we'll always kind of start. Um, for anybody that's joining us, get comfy, grab something to drink. I know some of, some of us have just gotten off of work. So kudos to you for, for uh, getting in here. I know it's a lot of, it's a lot of hard work. So right now, um, there is a, a link in the chat, and I'll put it up again in case it's not there because you just joined. But you can please go ahead and access that Google Doc. This is being recorded. So for anybody that is watching this recording, because if you are not attending this orientation, you need to uh, watch this recording. Okay, this is our lecture for the week. Uh, and. Um, you'll need to add to that Google Doc as well. So go ahead and open up that Google Doc and then come on down into this little area where, so our classmates this morning already added, but when we come down to this little 3 p.m. orientation, there's an area just to give us a little, a little check-in. Okay, so uh, coming back to, so this is where we'll always have an abbreviated, summarized uh, explanation of what we're doing this week. So when you're ready to move on, you're going to select next. And that allows us to tell the story. Since we aren't getting to meet um, every week, um, and, and many of us won't be able to make it, moving through the content is vital this is this is also the lecture right so our exercises are what we do is it's called active learning okay so active learning is where we're putting the reading up front and we're involving the personal narrative inviting you to be a part of it and then when we meet we do activities or exercises to reinforce the the concepts so that's kind of the idea behind an active learning classroom, which is totally doable online. Um, but I just want to make sure you guys know how to move through it. So, uh, okay, so to clarify, so some, uh, we're starting to talk about tools and, uh, well, this, in this lecture, we're talking about format. And, um, and here we have some main concepts, the primary and secondary sources. So why is this important? When we're dividing up information, it's good to have a general understanding of, uh, you know, how, uh, how they exist in our world. So a primary source would be anything that, and I like to call it a living document. So um, primary sources are, uh, they're photographs, they're um, data from research, blueprints, um, court rulings or Supreme Court rulings. Um, works of fiction, an interview, a tweet, okay? Is there anything that exists without the benefit of hindsight? They are, um, they have no analysis. They're, they just represent a, a snapshot of time. So then we have secondary sources and a secondary source is your, is your analysis. It's your explanation, it's your commentary, um, and it does benefit from hindsight. 
So usually it's an expert or somebody that uh, has studied this topic and they're, they're able to provide context and make connections where otherwise a primary source might be kind of floating there out in space and, and may not mean a whole lot. But if an expert historian looks at a particular piece of uh, legislation, they can, they can tell you about why it's important or what was going on at the time it was created. Um, so, so those uh, secondary sources are your journals, books, websites, reference uh, encyclopedias, um, and they serve a very important part of our information zeitgeist. So there is a little, for whatever reason, it doesn't show up in my instructor view, but this uh, video um, you'll need to watch. So I've also, what I also want to make you aware of is that I've embedded these little um, little quizzes. So, so uh, let me explain my grading for those. So these are, what they do is that they're, they're just little true false and, or they may be more complicated moving into the future. So um, five, so your, your grade, you can get a 5%, there's 5% participation points. So these true false questions, these go to your participation points. Now, if they're a more complex quiz that's, that's embedded in these, that becomes an assignment. And that rolls over into the 20%, I think, your, your assignments count towards your grade, okay? So if you have any questions about grading, just let me know. But the, um, the, the little true-false quizzes um, attached to these content, attached to these videos, is just to make sure that you are watching them and that you're getting those critical concepts. All right. Uh, all right, so this is also uh, starting to get into the way that information is categorized, cataloged, searched, um, and we introduced uh, Boolean operators and limiters. So a Boolean operator, this is a, a, a algebraic um, logic, and it's you guys probably remember from, ge from geometry class, like the concentric circles, right? So you have your circle A and your circle B. You have childhood obesity and school lunches, okay? You have these two floating concepts. When you do the A plus B, they, they uh, intersect and you get that sliver of information, you get that sliver of A plus B, okay? So that's how Boolean logic works. Um, it's uh, one of the foundations for algorithms, and it's uh, how um, that's how databases and uh, the internet, etc., how, to put it how, it, how it forces searching. Okay, so there's lots of um, really important concepts embedded in these little videos, like the uh, um, and or or not. Oh, actually, these are. These are stop words, but I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. So, and, or, or not, uh, these make the equation happen. So, if you have the A plus B, your childhood obesity and your school lunches, and you want them to overlap, you have to say and, and that forces them to overlap. If you want, if you type in or, this will search childhood obesity or uh, school lunches and you'll get everything, everything in both circles, plus the little sliver and returns just the little sliver. But say you have childhood obesity, but you wanna exclude, you wanna cut out anything about school lunches. Then you say not school lunches and it will actually force uh, out any articles that have school lunches in it. So you'll get all of A but no B, okay? So these are important uh, operators for, and these apply everywhere. So this works in the research databases and it will work uh, in Google, it'll work in um, government databases. Uh, almost all, I, I can't really, I can't really think of, you know, maybe like a, 
No, even Excel spreadsheets use these. So they are universally used. So get used to or, or try them out. You know, go into Google and try out. Also, it's important oftentimes just get in the habit of capitalizing them um, because Google treats them as stop words and what and, and Google just ignores the and the not uh, words that uh, Google recognizes stop words. They just uh, they they don't use them at all. Okay, so here you have, you see you have some in, a little embedded quiz here too. So limiters, this gets into even more um, tools that we use to control searching and you'll see uh, quotation marks, okay? Um, quotation marks force the Boolean logic to search by a phrase. And um, I think Google allows you to search up to a hundred words in a phrase. This works really well if you're looking for maybe a, a person um, or a scientific model or, or a, uh, a complicated um, uh, phrase or name, names especially. And anyway, you can try this out anywhere. Try it out in Google. Um, we will be doing a Google tutorial next week and that will be focusing in on Google Scholar and Google Scholar uh, very much uses these, um, these search limiters as well. So truncation is, a, is an asterisk. So this little asterisk, it's a control eight or shift eight on your computer. And this is a wildcard. So what it does is it um, forces the computer to look for any, um, any truncation, any, any sort of randomized uh, connect, connecting term. So I use the example child. It will search childhood, children, childs, single, uh, single child, childless, etc. So um, this works with any with any word, but you do need to be aware. So if I were looking for history and I typed in H-I-S-T, I would get history, historian, histogram, histology, and these are all very different from each other. So you need to be aware when you're using this little trick, uh, where's the best place to, to insert that truncation. Okay, so there's gonna be a little uh, quiz, a little true false at the end of that video there that explains how that works. Um, does anybody have any questions? Just wanna check in, All right. So we're coming to our personal learning history and this is the part where we do our pair share, okay? So moving forward with our personal learning history, you guys have done a great job. I'm, I've been really impressed with the amount that you're sharing and where we are going with this mini project is this will be our first artifact for our ePortfolio. Yes, so the ePortfolio, I'm dropping that on you guys week four. Um, I'm going to tell you about your midterm next week. So uh, lots of good, good things to come. So don't be scared. There's nothing, there's nothing too big about uh, these, these projects, but they are semester long projects. So I have uh, incremental um, due dates for, uh, you know, building a welcome page, uploading your personal learning history, um, adding a blog and pulling out discussion items and adding those discussion items to your ePortfolio blog. Um, so there will be lots of opportunity to customize and make your own ePortfolio website and then it's yours. Okay, so you keep it 
moving forward, it's free. It's free. And I'm going to let you choose whatever platform you want. Okay. I'm going to give you lots of suggestions. My suggestions are going to be Weebly or Wix. Uh, I made a Wix one. That's my example. I'll be sharing all of this with you guys very soon, but uh, I, I might even show it to you next week, but um, you, or you can use uh, Google sites as well. So wherever you feel comfortable, uh, you are welcome to use that, uh, that website builder. Okay. So the pair share, just a really quick uh, quiz. This is just going over the pair share um, protocol, which is we're going to, I'm going to put you into, into teams. And I think that we'll give, we'll give somebody else a, a chance to come on back a minute. Um, so we'll pair into a group and what you'll do is you'll give your partner uh, three minutes to talk about their personal learning history. And while you're listening, this is the time to be quiet. You just listen. It's not really a time to comment. Um, you're, giving your, you're giving your other uh, peers space to work with, all right? So we're practicing using our voices. We're practicing um, talking about an experience that we had where we learned something, okay? So where we're going with, with the peer learning, or excuse me, the personal learning history is that we're gonna make a video representation. So we will, so after today, um, part two of our personal learning history is Recording our experience with our partner. Hey, Marga, I'll let you. I'll let you check in in a second. Um, so our our personal learning history part two is where we're listening to our partner, giving them space to talk, and then we so we time too. And I I'm gonna recommend that you set your your clock for time for three minutes for each partner and to share their personal learning history. And then between the two of you at the end, you can kind of talk between the two of you and say, oh, you know, that was a common feeling for me too. I felt that way or that never occurred to me. I, I never really thought of that, okay? So the peer sharing is a low stakes way for you and your classmate to talk through your personal learning history. Uh, maybe give an example of when, of when that learning happened and then maybe explore some common, uh, when you're done with each of your three minute shares, you come back and you talk it out and then you can share to the class uh, some commonalities, all right? So the part two personal learning history was where you're gonna write down, all right? So write between 100 and 150 words your reflection on what you and your peer talked, what your pair talked about. Okay. So as you're listening to your partner, you're going to want to take some notes. Was there something that they said, maybe a golden line or um, a uh, instance where you were like, wow, that really spoke to me. So I, I went ahead and modeled a, a pair share and I'm going to share that with you. Oh, in and out. Why did I not? Yasmin, I didn't even think about in and out. What is wrong with me? That is, I think in and out might be the winner. I stay eating there. <laughs> I love the, the protein style and then the animal style fries. <laughs> it's so good. Yes. Have you had a protein style with the lettuce? Yes. Like a lettuce wrap? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm giving you dinner ideas. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's like one of those things when it, when, when it, it comes into the conversation, it has to be actualized. Like, I have to have an in and out tonight now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I had it yesterday for lunch. <laughs> Bravo. 
<laughs> well, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> and and Margaret, you're. Uh, do you wanna Do you wanna share with us? Do you have a Do you have a favorite fast food? Um, I don't eat a lot of fast food, but when I do, it's usually like um, Hawaiian barbecue or um, uh, wing stock. That's probably my two favorite. Wow. That sounds so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, are you just jamming from work? Did you? Uh... I am. I am. I'm actually, I have a friend driving right now, though. <laughs> you are a warrior. Thank you so much for being here. And we can, I mean, if you're getting off work at three o'clock and three o'clock's not going to work for you, we can, we can look for some other time too. Okay. I, I usually try to get out of there a little bit before three so I could just at least make it into my car. And I don't live that far away from work. So I'd probably get home about 15 minutes um, into it, um, which is fine with me. But just today, for some reason, I couldn't get out of there on time. Hmm. I know. I know how that goes. I would rather give you a little extra time. So okay. maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk it out with the rest of the class too. Cause right now there's, there is no, there is no um, attendance. So as you know, because of COVID, but I, but I've heard from a lot of students that they really are appreciating in class times. So, yeah. you know, I'm going to make that work for you guys. Um, Yasmin, how would you feel about like a 3.30 or even, I don't know, is 4 o'clock too late? I don't know. Well, I usually get off work at 5. So, I mean, I don't mind, but I'm on the school accommodation schedule. So, I get off at 3 usually on Wednesdays only. Okay, well, let's let's work it out because I have my morning class people. I don't know if they're going to want to keep going. Um, and, you know, we could also do this on Fridays, too. I was thinking about having community hours on Fridays, but whatever. Let's 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 talk it out. Let's keep moving. I'm just glad you're here. All right. So, um, so continuing on to so the personal learning history, I'll go ahead and, and share my model. So when you get into your peer share, and I'm gonna, uh, Margaret, are you gonna be home? Are you gonna be, are you gonna be in a place where you can think and think and share in, a, in like a couple minutes? Um, no, probably not. Maybe in like an hour. Hmm. I think it might be more beneficial. So Yasmin and Margaret, can you guys peer share? Uh -huh. And I think it would probably be better that you did it on your own time instead of me doing the Zoom share right now. Okay. Because you guys will, you'll get a lot more out of it if you give yourselves like, five minutes to talk through your own personal learning history and then make notes. And, okay. and frankly, um, you guys seem like you are um, pretty, uh, pretty quick to the game for, for getting these protocols. So I, I think you can handle it. Because what you'll need to do is that you'll take those um, observations that your peer shares and you're going to then write you know between 150 to 100 words about their about what your peer said so it's not necessarily about you then you then you okay. say oh, well, i kind of felt that way too or then you can reflect on what your peer said but it's really but the part two is is really kind of about the other person so I will leave it. I will leave it up to you. If you guys want to um, do it right now, I'll put you in a Zoom rooms. Otherwise, you guys can set up a time after class, maybe this afternoon, 
after Margaret gets home and Yasmin, if you have time, you can, you guys can meet with each other and you can do it over e Well, you can, you guys can zoom between the two of you too. I think okay, you have yeah. I don't mind. Um, I'm free at this afternoon. At what time? Whatever time you're available. I'm, I'm available all afternoon. Okay. Um, when I get a better time of when I'll be home, can I um, let you know? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to, or, well, you can message me through the canvas or do you want to? Okay. I'll message okay. you through canvas through Pronto first and then we can exchange. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out for you guys, just let me know and we can always like, I could, I can even sit in as your peer share. Okay. But the, but the important part is, is that like somebody else is listening and you're listening to the other person as well. So, okay. So, um, this is my, this is my model. So this is what I said. Um, and I gave myself about five minutes to just free type. Um, so what are some high points to my learning journey? Um, health and exercise just became really important to me because I mistreated my body for many years, um, eating awful of food, never taking care of myself. Like, um, and then my friend introduced me to uh, hot yoga and I was like, no way, absolutely not. This is crazy. I, but I went because I was kind of desperate. I got to admit, like it was, nothing was going right. Like I was in a kind of a low point in my life. And my, and I went and it was awful. It was like one of the most terrible experiences of my life. And I kind of almost threw up and it was just a really bad experience. But I got a lot of encouragement from the instructor and I got a lot of encouragement from my friend. And I went again and it got a little bit better and then I went again and it got better and then I was actually able to do some stuff and then I was able so the high point of my story was that I was able to touch my toes which I was having terrible back pain like um like having like considering going to have surgery back pain and the ability to bend over and touch my toes was an amazing high point so that's my, that's one of my high point stories. Um, and then, so along with the Tobias, um, so Tobias, when I felt like an outsider or insider, so when I first became an academic librarian, I didn't feel like I was accepted as a faculty member. And I felt like I struggled with imposter syndrome uh, or that I belonged being a college instructor um, and I just, it felt like it's taken me about five years to even just feel like I'm uncomfortable in my role. So that would, that's my example of how I felt like an outsider. And now it's weird because now I guess I'm an insider. Uh, yeah, it still is weird to me to to be thought of as an expert when sometimes I feel like I am an outsider. Okay. So that's my, that's my example. And you guys can use this to talk about in your personal learning history, um, whatever you want to share, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Um, okay. Okay. So a couple of other big points. Um, so the personal learning history, that assignment, that uh, write-up reflective on your peer share is due by Sunday. Um, and so finally, uh, I want to talk about our reading for the week. So, um, and I'm going to stop share for a second. So I have, I'm offering this to, to everybody. So this is our online textbook, okay? So this is that information literacy user's guide. And I've heard from 
quite a few of you that it's hard to navigate. And I agree. So this is the online version of what I've just showed you. It's actually a different book, but it's the same. No, here's the, okay. So the, here's the online version of the information users literacy guide. So you can open the book, you can go read this way. And how you get around is over on the left-hand side, you can open it up and then you have to press this little plus button and then you get to you can skip around but they don't number the they don't number the chapters or anything generally speaking this is kind of how our um our modules so our six modules are based and within this uh there'll be little text you can also come right down here at the bottom and skip to the next page by clicking next but I think that's it's super hidden and it's kind of hard to see. So I wanted to point that out. But what I'm offering is this whole thing. Um, the library, because of COVID, we will print this whole thing for you and make it available for free. We'll print it for free and make it available for contactless pickup at the Mercer College Main Library. And what I'll do is just put your name and it'll be waiting in the front lobby so you know we're we're no contact right now um but it'll be there for you and you can have a print copy which uh for me i i don't know about the rest of you but i love to have a print copy so i'm making that available to you also, we have our first reading for, um, hold on, let me just stop share. Also, we have our first reading for the bad key, the research strategies. So I know some of you, I heard that the bookstore doesn't have it. Um, I know some of you are waiting for the book to come in through the bookstore. I will, I'm gonna go in tomorrow and I'm gonna scan the chapter I think we're doing chapter one reading. I will scan and email the chapter to you. So if you want either of these things, email me. Send, go to your Canvas email, your Canvas inbox, and send me an email and say, hey, I need the bad key, and I need the, um, and go ahead and do, make me a print copy, and I'll come pick it up. And the library is open for pickup items, uh, Monday through Thursday, um, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Fridays, 10 a.m. to 2. So that's that. Now, do I do either of you do if you well if you don't live close, um, talk to me. I, I may be able to stick this in the mail too. Okay. So lots of ways. If you guys want a print copy of that SUNY text the information literacy user guide, then I'm happy to print this off and get it to you because we're really doing a lot of the exercises from here and it's a nice kind of context. Okay, so, so just email me for that. All right, so, okay. Um, what I also wanted to touch on were the, oh, that's our, that's our portfolio. Um, so we will be doing a class pact, and this is going to be part of our, of our e-portfolio as well. So the class pact, this is all language that I've, I got from your discussion posts that I took from, took from your introductories. So you know, I heard a lot of, a lot of feedback about anxiety. Um, I heard a lot of feedback about um, the fear of making mistakes or sitting in the back of the room, um, time. And I know that we are all very crunched on time. Some of us have multiple jobs. We have child, we have children we need to take care of. We have um, you know, a lot of uncertainty. There's just, 
a lot of uncertainty right now. Um, so what I'm doing this class pack, and this will go, this will be something that you can import and put into your ePortfolio as part of your goals and outcomes. There'll be a goals and outcomes page. And um, this is an art, this will be an artifact that you can look at and refer to uh, as to help you write your reflections. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is an active learning class. So really what we are looking for are, we're looking to focus on those moments when, when learning happens. Okay. So I'm going to come back to our, to our module here. Oh, right. Procrastination monkey. Already getting some really fabulous comments on this. I, li I like it. And I don't know, what do you guys think about this, uh, this commenting it within the video? Do you like it? What do you think? It's new. It's a brand new tool that um, the school just got. So I don't know. Any feedback? What do you think? I liked it. I thought it was cool. A cool way to comment. Thanks, Margaret. Yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, I think it has potential to, you know, at least engage with the with the video a little bit. So you don't have to be such a passive. Um, you know, it's, it's really no fun when you're just the information is just coming at you. Um, so thanks. I will also be soliciting feedback for these tutorials. Okay, so there's two tutorials. Um, and the first one is, I wanna make sure you guys know how to get there. This is how you open the tutorial. So under instructions, it goes to navigate the library, uh, the virtual library orientation and you click on that and it takes you outside of Canvas. So here you have just a little overview. You're gonna wanna watch the video. It's just Lindsay. Lindsay Davis is our instruction librarian. Um, there's, there's quite a few, well, let's not say quite a few. We, we're pretty small, um, our, our library, but we're small but mighty. Um, Lindsay Davis, Joey Merritt, Nancy Golds, and Wayne Altenberg. And then we have a couple of part-time faculty as well. Um, but we do a little bit of everything. I was telling Yasmin um, uh, before everything got started that uh, one of my duties is I work with the prisons. So uh, Merced College has a prison program and we teach associate transfer degrees. Uh, and this is, um, and that's one of my areas that I work on. So I actually, I'm very, I'm very, very, I have a lot of love for that population and they produce some really great work and um, it's, a, it's a really fascinating uh, world. Um, but anyway, this is how you move through the tutorial, okay? So just some quick questions, uh, shows you around, here's, oh, here's us, okay? And that's it. And then at the end, there's 10 questions. Pretty easy if you just, pay attention to um, the basic overview, the, the uh, directions on the left-hand side. And this is worth, I think, 20 points, okay? So the tutorials are, will take you outside of Canvas and uh, they're pretty low stakes, um, 20 points. And then what you do at the end, I should, well, I think I, I can upload what the PDF looks like, but, it, but it's a little certificate PDF that downloads and then you need to save it to your desktop and then upload it to the submission button, okay? All right, so that's enough for me. Um, I hope that and this is for, because this lecture is being recorded, um, this is for everybody that 
did not come to either 9 a.m. or 3 p.m. You guys need to get a hold of me so I can pair you with a partner for the pair share. Um, there's no other way to do this assignment without having the pair share. Um, and I, you know, I, I wouldn't really, well, no, I'm, I'm just going to say that right now. And then if you have, if you need to do an individual workaround, just inbox me in uh, Canvas, in the Canvas inbox over here and make sure you tell me, okay? So, so that said, um, were there any questions moving forward, thinking about either personal learning history, any of the tutorials, any of the lecture content, No, I'm good. No. I have no questions. Yeah, I'm sorry we weren't able to do the pair share right now, but I really think that between the two of you, uh, do this outside of class and have fun with it. It's, it's actually a really cathartic, um, beneficial, pair share gives the two of you a chance to say like, what was she talking about? I don't know what she's talking about. You know, I don't have to be there. I don't care what you guys say, as long as it's good. As long as it is about wing stop and uh, in and out. Mm. Um, but yeah, great. You know, great job. I'm, I'm really impressed with a lot of the work that you've done because we've already done, we're already halfway through a mini project. We've done um, an assignment. We've done <clears throat> two or three discussions. We're, you know, done all of our syllabus agreements. We're getting into the content. So you guys are doing great. So just, just keep, plotting along. Um, due dates, you know, Wednesday nights are for chats. I hope that you are able to get into the discussion commentaries and um, watch the procrastination monkey. Um, what was it? The dark, um, the, the, the dark place. Anyway, I'm already forgetting. But yeah, you're, <laughs> I love your commentary. It really, it really is the best. So, and then everything's due on Sundays. So uh, once again, if you want that text emailed to you, if you need the bad key email to the chapter email to you, um, get at me in, in the Canvas inbox and let me know that's what you want. And I'll email it to you tomorrow because I'm going to be on campus tomorrow. And if you want to pick up a copy of that no cost, no contact um, printed out version of our e-text, I will do that for you. So, all right, guys. So okay, gonna, thank you. I'm going to do stop share. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner. <laughs> I'll get a hold of